So we're doing a new series, uh, which is separation. Separation. And uh, anytime we go into any of this, we know it's by God's leading. And so God has something, something he wants us to take note of. Introduction I'm reading. Separation in scriptures is twofold. It's separation from that which is contrary to God's mind and separation unto God himself. So when you have separation, there's a dividing, moving in two different directions. So you move away from some things and you move towards some things. Somebody can help me put off one of the fans. One is good enough or bad enough. So just let me put off one. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to verse 18. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. I will be father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Very profound scripture. You know, it says that we should not unequally yoke ourselves. We usually use this in partnerships, in relationships, that there's no sense in a believer getting hooked to a non-believer on equal yoking uh, because there will be a problem there will be a problem you have an imbalance and so it goes on to say that there can't be any fellowship between righteousness and lawlessness they're far apart and very different there can be communion between light and darkness. It's impossible to see darkness when there's light. As a matter of fact, somebody says there's nothing called darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. Because once light shows up, you can't find darkness. And uh, it says that um, what accord or relationship will Christ have with the devil? or a believer with an unbeliever. They have different masters. So there can't be any relationship. What agreement will the temple of God, who we are, with idols? There shouldn't be. In other words, we should be separate. One is near to God. One is far from God. One is like God. One is different from God. And uh, he goes on to expatiate. We are the temple of the living God because he will live in us. He will walk among us. He will be our God. We will be his people. And for this to happen, we have to come out from among them, be separate. In other words, there has to be a separation. Now, it's only in this state of separation that we can expect God's maximum power and presence. It makes sense that if darkness and light cannot commune, if the temple of God and the temple of idol cannot commune, if righteousness and lawlessness cannot commune, so one opposes the other. So if you want the maximum presence of one, you should exclude the other. If you want the hand of the devil, you don't need God around. 
the presence of God will be a problem. And if you want the power of God maximally, the glory of God maximally, you have to be separate or separated from what is contrary to God. Habakkuk 2.20 Habakkuk 2.20 The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. So, God's presence demands certain things. We are separate from what we have normally. And so, when we expect God's maximum power presence, we have to be separated. And that's what can help us to give effective service. Because all this, we're talking about God's presence. What's it all about? It's to make us do what God wants. To achieve what God has in mind. Second Timothy chapter 2. 19 to 21. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having the seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel of honor, for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. You know, so God's presence maximized is to enable us to be able to give effective service. So there's a reason for separation. And um, I, I always look at that uh, scripture of in a great house, there are different kinds of vessels. So in a house, you have cups for drinking. You have flower vessels. There are vessels you put flowers in them. You have wash hand basin where you wash your hand. It's a kind of vessel. And you have the one where you want to poo-poo. It's a vessel. It's a vessel. The use to which you will be made to go through is dependent on the state that you are in. There are some cups you will not use to drink ordinarily. It's a cup, all right. But because of its state, you can't use it to drink. But you can use it to wash your leg. You can use it to wash out, to, uh, to water the garden. Okay? So, if you want to be used maximally by God. Yeah, good deal. You are in the house. You are in the house. It's a big deal to be in the house. But in the house that you are in, there are different kinds of vessels. And they are for different kinds of uses depending on how separated they are. So, the essence of separation is to bring about God's maximum power and presence to make us effective for God. Now, our separation is important to God for a number of reasons. Number one, God desires that we are separated to him. Genesis chapter 12, God was speaking to Abraham and God said to Abraham, now the Lord has said to Abraham, get out of the country, of your country, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Separate yourself from them. Because there are things in them, there are things about them that I don't like. That are contrary to God's mind, as we saw. All right? That if I'm going to bring about my power and presence in you, to achieve great service through you, the whole earth will be saved. Then you have to be separate from them. So God desires it. Just move away from that place. Come near to me. And Abraham obeyed. And the Bible says it was counted to him for righteousness. So we can understand that 
There possibly was lawlessness and so God called him unto righteousness. There was uncleanness, God called him to holiness. Israel as a nation was also called to be with God. To separate themselves from the rest of humanity. So that God's power can be maximized in them. His presence can be uh, maximized to bring about effective service. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for himself. A special treasure above all the peoples on the face of the earth. So God wanted a nation for himself. We know how he found Abraham and said, oh, I know him. He will command his children after him so that they will do so and so, so that what God has promised can come to pass. So God desires it. He made it clear and known to Israel that that's what he wants, for them to be a special people, a holy people, in a world that is full of sin. And to be a people that would be worthy, a special treasure in a world that is full of worthless people. So that's God's desire that he brings some people to himself who will choose to also dedicate themselves to him. Separation from, separation to God. Now, the New Testament saints also experience God's desire for um, separation to himself. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 7. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother, in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also for one you and testify. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness, or to holiness. So you find here that the call that comes to you and I is um, God wants us to separate ourselves. He, he wants us to cut away from those things that he doesn't want. In other words, we ought to walk in a way that will please him. Knowing his commandments, that's his desires, his instructions. And bringing about a sanctification. Sanctification is closely related to separation. Sanctification has to do with holiness. And once you are Separated, sanctification becomes easier. Otherwise, you get polluted uh, all the time. So there's a reason for the separation. Come out. So God wants it. He said to Abraham, just leave those guys. Come to where I will show you. And Israel, be different from the people. And up till now, many of these things run in the veins of the Israelites, the Israelis, in their, brain, their mindset. You can see what they do, uh, how they are fighting and how they are doing things, claiming lands that they said God promised to Abraham. I don't know of any nation that holds fast to what God has promised them like the nation of Israel. People become presidents based on their attitude to the promises of God to Abraham. So it's a holy nation and they drum it they drum it, you know, they go to United Nations, they quote the Bible. They quote and they refer to things because they always 
remember that they are supposed to be different, separate. And no wonder the results you see from that nation is astounding. So many Nobel laureates, so many billionaires, you know, in a small country. And they can fight. They are near a lot of enemies who have money and, and have them, um, uh, what you can call um, courage. You know, the devil has his own courage. And this, despite all that, they are still standing. You know, let you know that separation is key, is important to God. He wants it. He desires it. Number two, he commands it. You know, to desire something is different from when you now even voice it out. That you command it, you instruct it. You let somebody know, everybody know that, look, I want this. So, if you don't do it, you are disobeying. That's serious. That's serious. Leviticus chapter 10, verse 10. Leviticus 10, 10. That you may distinguish between holy and unholy and between unclean and clean. Now, you see, God gave certain instructions in the Old Testament that are like their types and shadows. All that God was trying to make them to understand is the principle of separation. So he gave them clean animals and unclean animals, drinks that they were not to touch. So he said, you will not take wine or intoxicating drink. That's verse 8. That you may distinguish between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean. So the law was a schoolmaster. It's like a schoolmaster in secondary school or primary school. The things that you are told, these are principles that later on will become applied things. Then that's when they become functional so for all that time, God said they were not to do some things so that they can know that there's difference in this world. There's separation in this world. So that's it. God commanded it so that they can be separated. Chapter 11, the same Leviticus, verse 45. Leviticus. For I am the Lord who brings you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. You shall therefore be holy for I am holy. I'm bringing you out of somewhere to separate you to myself. And that means you must carry my characteristics. Holiness. Verse 47 of chapter 11. 1147. To distinguish again between the unclean and the clean, between the animal that may be eaten and the animal that may not be eaten. So when you go and look at the animals that are not supposed to be eaten, you see something like snail, you know, ah, that they should not eat snail. Just to know the difference between, you see how serious it is. And even fish, I know if they saw the clarias that we eat, you know, arrow, it doesn't have scale. It says fish that don't have scale, they are unclean. So if you have been eating um, pepper soup of Aro, you have been eating unclean animal. But God made it clear when he spoke to Peter, Peter, arise, kill, and eat. And Peter said, no, I can't. I can't eat anything. I can't. Ah, anything that is unclean, I won't touch it. And God said, look, anything that I have called clean is clean. So, all that principles that I gave you guys in the Old Testament is just to make you understand that there is something called a difference, a separation, a separation between clean and unclean, righteous and lawless. Deuteronomy chapter 22. I think God desires it and God commands it. He instructs that we, we do those things. Deuteronomy 22, from, okay, just uh, verse 10, just verse 10, I think we, 
You shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. Now, imagine a, a, an ox has like dynamite power, but short-lived. It gets tired easily. But the donkey has a lot of energy, but it goes on steadily. The ox will rush and be tired. But the donkey will just be going steadily and be going on. All right. And it says you won't plow with the two of them. It's punishment to both animals if you plow like that. Because the ox wants to go, the donkey doesn't want to go. And when the ox is tired, the donkey wants to go on. So it's like a Christian and an unbeliever. Because that's where we're going. It's a commandment. You will not do this thing. You will not wear a garment of different sorts. You can't wear wool and linen mixed together. You see it in scripture there. So all this um, mixture of cotton and um, rayon and, you know, present so and so, it was forbidden. Command. So that they will understand the principle of separation. Okay? And um, it is not that he desires it. It is that he commands it. And so when you do such things, you are going contrary to what he has said. So we have Second Corinthians. We have read that earlier. You know, no, uh, they, there's no concord between darkness and light and so on and so forth. It is a command that we separate. The last one here is he delights in it. He wants it. He commands it. And when it happens, he delights in it. See, the Lord showed and thereby thought separation. Even in Egypt, he likes it. That's why he said we should do it. Exodus chapter 10 from 22 to 23, just two verses. Exodus 10, 22. So Moses stretched out his hand towards heaven and there was thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Three days. They did not see one another nor did anyone rise from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Wow. Verse 23. They had light. Those who are his children, they had darkness. Those who are not his children. So we see that God was showing his pleasure with his own children. So don't think that evil that we see happening has to be your lot. Because God's design is separation. He says somewhere that the righteous will not lay his hand on sin. Okay? So there is design of separation. Chapter 11 of Exodus verse 7. But against none of the children of Israel shall the dog move its tongue against man or beast, that you may know that the Lord does make a difference between the Egyptian and Israel. So, that you don't think it's a coincidence. All right? God said, look, you won't even see such a thing as that. Look, child of God, we, we in Vine Branch, we are a separated people. The kind of things that we see and experience, not born out of people being in politics, people being blessed, buying cars, building houses, children succeeding. You know, you, you need to go out there and hear stories about children of people that are vagabonds, children of people that are on drugs. You know, uh, uh, somebody introduced a lady to me who was looking for help for her son. She videoed the son herself, you know, and sent it. If you watch the video, you will, 
Imagine the agony in the heart of the mother. You know, when all this slow motion movement, slow, the boy was do, just do like that, and the woman says, ah, I can't, I can't abandon him. He's my son. This and that. And he was ready to go to any length. And we live in a place where most of our children, they turn out right. It's not, it's not so in the world. It's not so. If you know the kind of calamity that people experience, you will know that there is a marked difference between what we enjoy and what's outside. And that difference ought to be distinct as we separate unto him. Because in his presence is fullness of joy and, you know, pleasures. So, but people don't understand that. They think coming to church is routine, is a ceremony, but you better know that God has designed it to be a place of separation. His blessings come as we remain separated. Numbers 10, 29. Because you might be wondering, what's this one that pastor said we should study again now? Separation. In a time like this, when we are looking for help, the Lord will bless you out of Zion. Out of Zion. Separation into Zion. Numbers 10, 29. Now Moses said to Hobab, the son of Ruel, the Midianite, Moses' father-in-law, we are setting out for the place of which the Lord said, I will give it to you. Come with us and we will treat you well. O King James says, we will do you good. For the Lord has promised good things to Israel. Come with us. Separate yourself from those people. Separate unto us. So that you can also participate in the good that God has promised. That's it. God delights in it. As you come to him... His blessings are manifested in greater uh, proportion. Psalm 33 verse 1. Psalm. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. When the upright are the ones praising God, it is beautiful to God. All those shouts of Allow Akbar, are you following me? He's saying God is great, but may not impress God because that's not coming from the upright. It's not what you say that matters. It's also who you are. It's also who you are. It's also who you are. That's why separation becomes important. You see that sometimes what those guys are doing are heinous, terrible, and uh, they are healing. It can't be the same God that we are serving. It can't be the same Father that we belong to. Psalm 40 verse 16. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love you serving say continually, the Lord be magnified. You proclaim his glory as you stay separated. And that matters to him. He delights in it. When his Israel, when his Zion are the ones who are proclaiming his glory, glory and his greatness. 2 Corinthians 6, 18. We saw that. Uh, okay, let's just read that verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. I'll be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. It's a strong word for somebody to say, I'll be father to you. It's a, an indication of approval. Of approval. That, ah, I'll be, you know, I'll be your father. It's not just a statement that um, I will do, but I will be so happy that I will be father to you. I'm proud of you. Okay, you know, there was this joke they used to talk about our Babani, eh? you know, and um, you know, this man went with his son, maybe just to make the point, to the graduation ceremony. And they went in the vehicle that was available to them, that was their two legs. 
And uh, one boy was forced. Got 90 over 100. And the father looked at the boy. I want money, yeah. Another one got 98. I want money, yeah. So when they finished and they were going home, and people were coming out with their Prado, the boy looked at his father and said, I want Babani, yeah. Yeah, so God wants to brag that that's my son about us as we stay separated to him. Now, separation from evil has certain implications. It means separation in the three spheres of man, our thoughts, our words, our deeds in our thoughts. First Kings chapter 8 verse 39b. Here Solomon was praying to God. First Kings chapter 8 verse 39. I'll read the whole verse. Okay. Then here in heaven your dwelling place and forgive and act and give to everyone according to all his ways. Whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of all the sons of men. In other words, our thoughts, our thinking should be different, should be separated. When we see situations, we should think differently. What should go on in our mind should be different. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Because out of it are the issues of life. So you don't want your heart to be polluted so that your thinking is polluted. God expects our thinking to be different and you know it's obvious that when your thinking is different what you see will be different what you plan will be different all right so yeah we're supposed to be separate from them but even if we are physically forced to be around them our thinking can be separated yeah we can be there and far away from them in thoughts all right First, Corinthians, uh, First Chronicles 29, 17a. First Chronicles 29, 17a. I know also, my God, that you, I know also, my God, that you test the heart and have pleasure in uprightness. You test the heart. You have pleasure in uprightness. Many times you can do things wrongly based on um, a mistake of the head miscalculated what's serious is when we have a mistake from the heart that our thought itself is away from god so god expects us to think differently you know there are times that what will help you to be different is to say to yourself what will God expect me to do in this situation? Think differently. Be opposite. And we know that in, in the kingdom, the way things happen is different. You want to go up, the way you do it in the world is you pull people down. You tell lies against them. You destroy their names. But in the kingdom, Jesus said, you want to be the leader? Be the servant. You go out, down. In the world, you want money, okay? You stop spending. Like they say, can all you can. Just keep keeping it. But in the kingdom, you want more. It says give and it will be given to you. So your thinking has to be different. The guy who is giving when he's looking for, his thought is different from the man who is always Hiding what he has. Different thoughts. And I believe this is where the whole thing, you know, that's where it starts. 
If you want to be separate from the world, your thought has to be separate. We're getting there later, but Romans 12 says, but be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, changing the way you think. That you don't think it happens the way we were taught. All right? He wants us to be different in thoughts. Then to be different, separated in words, in what we say. In what we say. Yes, what we see could affect what we think. And what we think would affect what we say. But sometimes you can make a mistake with what you think and stop yourself from even saying what you shouldn't say. The best thing is to separate your thoughts. But even if you fall at that level, don't keep falling. Watch what you say. Separation in words. Matthew 12, 36. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. No idle words. This Nigeria self, this Tinumbu has Tinumbu'd you. I know, you understand? Yeah, it starts from what you think. Am I saying he's doing well? I'm not saying so. But I'm saying you watch your words. Be separate. Let people know that, ah, this guy is speaking. Okay, he must be a Christian. We've noticed what he's saying. We've seen the way he's, you know, speaking. All right? By the time we are saying the same things that, you know, everybody is saying, then we can't be different. We can't be separate from him. And we can't be separate to him. And then it's difficult for his power and glory to maximize in our lives. You know, there's some things that when I hear them, it's strange. We have a driver that... Um, We'll go and do all night and we'll fast and then we'll see somebody and they say, and I say, hey, hey, brother, we, we, oh, you have not eaten all day. You have not eaten. You are, you are abusing somebody, you are insulting somebody. How do you feel? But it's changing, you know. I say, how do you feel? You are, you are fasting, but you are seeing somebody and you are telling the person, they die around. Say, they, you better look for bread and eat. Separation in words. I love Vine Branch members. Honestly, we don't hear some terrible things here. Even our prayers, you know, the kind of prayers some people pray. Separation in words. Those prayers sometimes are not different from the incantations of Papa Lawu. Ephesians 4 31. Don't look at anybody. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Let bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, clamor. You know, can you imagine all these things that it should be away from us, separate from us. All right? And let's go to chapter 5. What we say, what we say matters. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. Foolish talking. You know there's some foolish talking. When somebody says, Mokuo, Pastor Dustin told us one day he was in a vehicle that was going to have an accident and somebody was in a mokuo and he said that any ku <laughs> a person that is dead doesn't speak. What kind of foolish talk is that? You say you, 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 have, you have died and you are talking. Ah, that's foolish talk. In the same way, sometimes you see people referring to some things that doesn't make sense. The fact that we're Christian doesn't say that what we should say should be foolish. We are still be separated in speech or coarse jesting. 
Yeah, you could jest, but coarse. That's jesting that will leave somebody very sad because you said some things. So, separation in thoughts, separation in words, and separation in action. What we do. Are we different from the world? Or are we doing the same thing like the world? If we're doing the same thing as they do, then we can't expect a different result. But when we do something that is bringing us closer to him, we can experience more of his power. Second Chronicles 31, 20, 21. Thus is God did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and true before the Lord is God. And in every work that he began in the service of the Lord, in the house of God, in the law, and in command to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. So he prospered. He did it. So the things he did were different. And it led to prosperity. So from now on, let that just be a guiding thing. I won't think like the world. I won't talk like the world. I won't act like the world. I will be imitating my father. Now B, separation from unholy, profane believers. They are believers. They are saved, but they are like Esau, profane. They don't value their promise from God. Okay? Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. You better know it. It's not every believer that understands God properly. It's a great thing to understand God. The Bible says those who know their God are strong and they do exploits. So God doesn't expect us to be like them. So separation in word, sorry, in thought, in word, in deed, from the world, but even among the church, we want to be separate from the unholy or profane believer. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 20, but in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver. We talked about that earlier. You want God to value you for you to be a vessel of choice if there's a glass that the master uses to drink that's what i want to be not even the one for the servants okay you know there are cops in the house that are not for um those who are less than a level children you give them plastic cups because they can break it. All right. So we're saying that we want to be separate from such people who do not bring themselves up to God as golden vessels, precious vessels that will be for honor. They're just happy to be in the house. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 6. Second Thessalonians 3 6. But we command you, we command you brethren in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. Every brother. So the fact that they are called brother shows that they are born again. All right. You can say they are Christians. So it's not every Christian. Is it doing what pleases God? Alright? If it's not doing what pleases God, you stay. You separate from such. Separate from profane believers. They call themselves believers. But when you see... And, and I want to say that unequal yoking is not just between um, unbelievers and believers. Even among believers, there can be unequal yoking. Among believers, there was a time I was involved, somebody, we had a partnership, and this person is a Christian. But our understanding of God 
is different. I'm using this because it's alive. All right, it's different. If you come to this church, especially you come on Thursday, you are not a common person. You are a peculiar nation. All right? It's just for you to know. And I had that dream that I was trying to go somewhere and my leg was tied to something and then, you know, and then I prayed and I believe, oh, that's like unequal yoking. If you have a partner who is believing God for 100,000 when you are believing God for 100 million, that's unequal yoking. It won't work. Even between husband and wife, you have to resolve issues, what you want. My wife is not here, but she wouldn't mind. You know, there was a time she wanted us to have a house. And um, she bought a land in um, Ajibode, two plots. Ajibode wasn't the kind of place I would want to go. Because when I was growing up, we were growing up in Okeado. My father moved us to Ife Road. It was bush. And if you leave gate, you won't see anything until you see Loyola. And after Loyola, you won't see anything until you see Green Springs. After Green Springs, you won't see anything until you see, you see Eudora Villa. Those things, eh? If we were going home, if there wasn't a car, you had to go with the vehicle going to Ife or Akumu. It was as serious as that. So you now want me to go and live in Ajibode again. Ha! It was a nice thing. But you know, God did it. We needed money. Why don't we sell those the plots? It was easy. We just sold the plots. And it would be like, can these people build their house? But when we agreed a house in Bodija, uh -huh. Is it cheaper than Ajibode? Definitely no. Then did it happen? Yes, it did happen. Are you following me? So you can be Christians together. If your level of faith is this level and the other person's level of faith is this. Look, that person that I said was a partner. We did a business. Somebody took our money like that. His name is Wasiu. The guy went to the back of the factory. He was crying. And I got there and I was laughing. I said, I said he has done what he wants to do. He said, ah, Pastor, he burst into tears. Can we agree on the same thing? No. So the day the guy came and said he got a job somewhere. I won't say where so you won't know who the person is. I said, to God be the glory. Separation from on who. I hope I'm talking to someone. You may say, yeah, he's a believer. But if you don't have the same level of understanding. That's why it's good for husband and wife to be in the same assembly. If the two of you will believe God for 100,000, stay there, and you know, then that 100,000 will happen. But if somebody goes to a level, a level higher, the, you know, nothing will happen. Even that 100,000 self, you won't see. Separation from false brethren. Now, these ones are pretenders. They are not Christians, but they come around they stay. You see, God's word is so complete. It says separate from them. Galatians 2, 4. Separation from false brethren. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. Now, these ones, they have a negative agenda. A negative agenda. I've seen a man who took part in preparing for the Hambunke. And then when the next Ramadan came, he was fasting. I said, ah, false brethren. True life story. I don't know why he did it. He was with the Hambunke planning committee. And he was still a Muslim. We need to be careful. Separation. So anybody that behaves in a way that you are not sure you better move away. The Bible advises in Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Thank God Jesus has said, by their fruits, you will know them. 
Look, the man who has lower level of faith is different from the man who is devilish. This one is a trickster. He has an agenda. He has evil plans. So, separate from them. When you see somebody who is, who is manipulating, you don't have any business. Thing. In fact, you should run. You should run. Uh, there's, there, there's a man I know. He called himself a, a prophet then, you know. And then all kinds of despicable things. So, it's not just that you want to condemn. No, no, no. Run away. Separate from such people. John 1, 9 to 11. See, because God wants to do great things for us. But um, there are things that can hinder uh, his hand. Whoever transgresses. Yes. And does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house, nor greet himself. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. So when you see a man, he calls himself a pastor, a prophet, a, an apostle, and then the kind of prayer he's asking people to pray, the kind of action he's asking people to do, you know, is not in agreement with God the doctrine of Christ, then you better move away. That's why I like, you know, if you're going to be a member of this church, you go through the Christian Foundation class because it's good for us to know the principles of the doctrine of Christ. When you know those things, you can't go very wrong. Are you following me? You may not have gingim faith to heal, all right? But you will understand God to know what to do and what not to do. All right? D. Separation from the world. Yeah, we started that. Yeah, when you separate from the world in your thoughts, in your words, in your deed. But then, if you can, move away from them. First John 2.15 Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So there are things in the world that we are not to love. We are to separate ourselves from. We are to move away from them. This is not just you doing them, but it's also you not staying around them. Romans 6, 11 to 13. Likewise, you also reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey in it in its loss. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Sin shall not have dominion. You can't be a Christian and the urge to keep sinning is in you. Unless something is wrong. That's the world. So there are things that we should not stay near, that we should not condone. All right, because it's not like our father. Romans 8 6. For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We should be spiritually minded. Our separation, however, is not from contact with evil in the world or evil in the church, but complicity with it and conformity to it. Don't agree with it. Don't partake in it. Romans 12 says that, okay, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy as the word of God, which is your reasonable service. A sacrifice is dead. Is dead. When you say something is sacrificed, it's killed. So we are killed. We are dead. But we are living unto God. So we should present our bodies a living sacrifice, which is holy. So when you are dead, you cannot sin. And then when you do not sin, you are acceptable to God. That's it. So we should not com uh, uh, co uh, co agree with what they're doing. We should not conform. We should not also be involved. 
John 17, 15. John 17, 15. That's John 17, 15. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. That is the high priestly prayer of Jesus. But I should keep them from the evil one. The evil world is around us. But we are not to be contaminated by it. We are to be separate. All right? So we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. Jesus is our model of separation. Hebrews 7, 26. He is our model. A high priest that is fitting for us. You can see he is holy. He is harmless. On the filed, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. He mingled with them. He ate in their homes. He moved with them, but he was not defiled by them. He was rather the one that was convicting them of what they shouldn't be. Okay? And our model should not be that of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who had a mechanical an ascetic concept of separation or holiness. They, 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 I mean, they had a mechanical one. They thought that that separation is, you know, you take care of it by washing your hand before eating, not knowing that what's inside is worse than what's outside. Luke 7, 39. Now when the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself saying, this man, if he were a prophet, will know who and what manner of woman this is who is touching him for she's a sinner you know so that was their own standard and that shouldn't be our standard in this church i always say let's not look down on anyone let's express the love of christ to them so that they can also see that love and grasp it matthew 3 7 to 9 Matthew 3, 7 to 9. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, that's John, he said to them, brood of vipers, who, you know, who want you to flee from the Lord to God and so on and so forth. You know, they were a separate, I mean, they would look, I mean, the Pharisees looked like holy sets, but they didn't understand the heart of God. The rewards of separation are immense. We are guaranteed, number one, full manifestations of God's divine fatherhood we saw that in second corinthians 6 17 18 especially he will be father to us so when we want to pray we are not looking to god we are to, talking to to father on him that communion and worship hebrews 13 13 to 15 on him that communion you don't have to start praying and asking for forgiveness you know you just say father i know that you hear me Let's come boldly to the throne of grace. Hebrews 13, 13 to 15. It says, therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For there we have no continuous city, but we seek the one to come. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So we should come to him the way he wants us to come. Unhindered. Not breaking the relationship. The prodigal son he lost communion with the father and he lost access to the great things in the house. Number three, fruitful service. Our services should not be with stress. One thing I love about Vine Branch is you can enjoy serving God. You know, some of us, we didn't give our life to Christ on time because I look at you people and I say, how can one live like this? Eh? Well, you know, enjoy. Eh? It was as if there is nothing again. But you see, when one got to know Christ, we saw that all that was just nothing. It was just, in fact, it was perversion of what God has in mind. Fruitful service comes with separation. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. What makes us precious to the master is that we are separated. 
and we are sanctified. We are clean. We shun the uh, defilement. And when we do this, we are prepared to enter into dominion in Christ Jesus. Let's pray.